Hello, people. I'm going to be loud so I don't need to use the microphone. Um, hi, I'm Emily. I'm the um, head of product at Solo Machines. But that's not at all what I'm talking about today. What I'm talking about today is um, a story of how compiling human languages into JavaScript with uh, message format.js, a really cool tool. Or, um, in other words, this is going to be a, a cautionary tale of what can happen when effectively you have too much free time. So, <laughs> the story for me started in uh, 2012 when I decided to go to the um, 2012 World Science Fiction Convention, Worldcon, in Chicago. Worldcon is a multi-thousand person convention, really cool thing, more about that a little bit later. However, the thing is that they had a mobile app that really was, I thought. I did not find their interface as pleasing as I wish it could have been. But the mobile app did have a nice feature, which was that it had a JSON interface that they were talking with the backend API, and they were not limiting the connections to that. So I figured, you know, I'll write my own thing. So then I ended up spending about uh, two weeks hooking it up together, and they came up with a cool tool that ended up, I ended up calling it Con Opas, because I needed a name and Con Opas, because I'm finished. Uh, and then, so that's the real thing. It, it's cool. And um, over the next couple of years, uh, I've been working on it, and it's been used by a number of different, especially science fiction conventions uh, in the uh, States and in Europe. I mean, it's a thing that scales, so if you have a program track of maybe about 20 items, it kind of makes sense. It has a back end that makes work for that. If you have 1,200 items, that's the you know base use case for which it's been designed, multi-track thing, it'll work, um, it's open source, and, and so on. So that's kind of nice. But you know, then I realized at one point that I was having an interface where I was actually writing some of the code, uh, some of the language that was presented in the interface into JavaScript. So it was stuff like this. This is an actual example I took from um, Hang on, just recalling it. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's an actual, you know, code that I had in my in the source code for for this. That was just, you know, generating a message uh, that was printed on the screen about how many program items there were, you know, to be listed. And oh god, maintaining stuff like this is horrible. And it just, you know, I wanted a different version for this, a different solution for this. And this is where the part of this is a spare time project because, you know, <laughs> becomes important. Because for stuff like this, considerations like, you know, okay, I'll do this thing to make my life easier, kind of, hence the cautionary tale part here, as you'll, you know, begin to find out. So I found out about ICU message format, which is this format. Um, there's basic Java and C++ support for this stuff, where you can write... Uh, language sort of as you can see I've written there at the bottom your and then a variable name and there's a couple of different types you can do the plural or select or a, never mind and then different cases of if there's just category of one or category of other because this is English then you can select you know one message or messages go uh, and so on so that's really quite cool but this is JavaScript I'm doing it's a front-end thing it's it's a tool that needs to actually operate entirely offline in the browser because Hello, you're using it at a conference. You don't trust the internet at all. Okay, so I found a pretty good library for that um, called messageformat.js. And what that does is that I get to write my input in, in this sort of language. And in the code, I've got the code, uh, the stuff that calls it. And what messageformat.js does, it takes this stuff, this message formatted language, and it produces JavaScript out of that. And then I can take that JavaScript string output, store it into a file, and then when someone opens up my app, they get served that JavaScript directly, which is quite cool. However, the unfortunate thing is that this is the output when I started, before I got started with it, that uh, message format of JS was giving uh, for the above function. Uh, there, yeah, all of that to produce that one sentence. And I thought that was a little bit verbose, and uh, 
I could fix this. <laughs> um, so I did. So I refactored the whole library. So the above example currently produces um, that. There's a couple of functions that, it, that I included statically at the beginning of the file and blah, blah, blah. It just, it's prettier. It's nicer. I, I wish I could do it in ES6 because then it would be even prettier, but I can't do that really yet. Not for stuff that, you know, ends up yet, yet. But yeah. Then, um, so I did that. I ended up getting commit access to the whole thing, and I've probably, you know, written about half of it now. But yeah, that's what happened. And then, you know, actually used the thing, which was nice. So this is, um, and honestly, um, yeah, that's an actual example from my current code base that I had to trim it down a couple of the cases because it was being a bit too. So I'm using, I, I, I'm formulating a sentence that is presented to the user and formulating a language like this, and it's nice. And uh, I have the same sentence. I can have the same variables come in, and the cases, uh, the, the the solutions in in Finnish and in Swedish currently as well for the thing. And getting uh, another language, uh, getting your whole user interface to work in another language is pretty easy. Which is this is the important, actually useful, possible part of this presentation is that this is a tool you should consider if your code contains any words in it. And especially if, you're, <laughs> especially if, you're, if those words are not just you know, directly printed strings, but you're you know, combining strings into saying you have five messages, for example. But yeah, that's a, that was one thing. And then I got annoyed at the fact that Message because this is the message format is a tool that supports many many different languages. I think at that point we were up to about 50, 40 or fifty, and for every single language, it needed to have in the you know in the repository a little function you know file for every single language for these things, and that was a pain to maintain. And then you have to you know figure out that when someone told me, actually in in Brazilian Portuguese it's not quite this, but it's this other thing, and this kept on. Um, so, I figured, hang on, I could fix this. <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote uh, make plural.js, um, which what it does is it goes to the Unicode common language data repositories, language plural rules, which are formatted uh, like this. Um, yeah. Um, because the thing that I didn't tell you is that for pretty much most of the languages that you need to consider, there are two different forms of plurals, Ordi uh, cardinal plurals and ordinal plurals. So for English, you have um, one message, many messages, um, but then you have first message, second message, third message, and so on. So you have these rules determining the categories, uh, what they are. And these are all, this is directly copied from the JSON that uh, the Unicode provides. So what makeplural.js does, it fetches this JSON and it passes it and it outputs this JavaScript. Um, so we have makeplural being a tool that produces JavaScript that's stored in a file that's then uh, imported into the compile time form of message format so that the runtime output of message format can have this cool stuff in it and you know, it's easier because the, the message format JS doesn't have to include this bit in it anymore. Um, so yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. And um, this, I don't remember when the timeline is sort of fuzzy on how events progress exactly. But then there's this thing called ECMAScript 6 or 2015 or whatever it was that came out. And then, um, oh yeah, then um, forgot about that. The, 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 uh, yeah, the, the, the message format the, you, you includes make plural. And um, then I refactored all of make plural into completely an ES6 application. And that was kind of fun. I learned a lot doing that. You know, the styles of, yeah, that was interesting. So that happened. Um, then, sort of next, but possibly partly in parallel with that, um, I got involved in Java, JavaScript Globalization Working Group. Um, because when you dig down deep to this level of getting one message against two messages to work in JavaScript, 
there aren't that many other people doing that work with you. <laughs> so I'm on a mailing list that has most of the other people who work for places like Microsoft, Yahoo, Google, you, a couple of names you might have heard of. And uh, that was kind of weird, but cool. And uh, then at one point, one thing that's slowly happening there is uh, JavaScript is um, developing, advancing as we are continuously. And one of the things coming up at some point is the Intel object is going to get this plural rules thing that's going to do most of what make plural does. Um, and I wrote a polyfill for that because, yeah, why not? It was a couple of days actually at that point. Uh, uh, I still may think gone us. I'm still in the middle of porting it to ES6, but you know that's taking a while because it's a spare time project and I'm not really concentrating on that too much. But yeah, that happened. Um, should also mention coming back. This is again the thing. If you have free time, sometimes that turns out to be a problem. Because if you rewind to the beginning, and I mentioned I, you know, had this free time, and I decided to go to the Worldcon in Chicago. One of the things I ended up also doing in Worldcon in Chicago is realized, hang on, we could have this in Helsinki. So you know, um, we are having it in Helsinki in 2017, um, and uh, I got now other people to run it, um, and I'm just doing the DevOps part of it, which is kind of fun. Which is is one of those things. Oh, I think one way of seeing what I'm doing for that is running the biggest uh, fan-related convention programming effort ever. Uh, sort of in parallel because it makes stuff easier later or something like that. Um, but yeah, that was my talk. Thank you for your attention. I'll be happy to take questions if you have any. I'm okay. Were you typing for real? <laughs> <laughs> Just very fast. Yeah. Do you have any class course, anything on typing your typing? <laughs> no, you've got to learn that, you know. It, it takes a little while. Next, yeah, especially yeah. getting the, the shift and, you know, combinations to work. That's wow. a bit tricky. It's on the keyboard. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an official solo keyboard, in fact, that I'm using. But, yeah. Oh, you were born with it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've added a couple of the links to messageformat.js onto the talk bit for this event, and um, I can probably post a link to it somewhere. One note that if you do actually look at messageformat.js, uh, we're kind of running behind on updating the documentation, so the version you'll get out of NPM um, is not quite ancient but old, so you got to go to the pre-release branch on NPM to get the latest, which does all cool things which half of which are not really documented, but the code is really clear. You can look at that. Because <laughs> again, free time project. I, I'm doing it for fun, maybe. Um, thank you. That was it. Thanks,